Welcome to Heavy Weapons Training for Halo 3. I'm the Avery. Dean Gulberry, Bishop 56 and I are here to share some of the tips and tricks used by Halo 3's elite players. The purpose of these videos is to help you perfect your skills and provide you with the strength you'll need to succeed in the Halo 3 Championship starting in March. This video focuses on Halo 3's support weapons. These weapons are very powerful and hotly contested. When wielding a support weapon, your movement is substantially slower. You can't duck, use a scope, make melee attacks, throw grenades, or swap weapons without dropping the support weapon. Also, the camera pulls back when you're using a support weapon, making it slightly harder to aim, but increasing your situational awareness. This allows you to see foes approaching you from the sides or even from behind, as well as allowing you to see around corners and obstacles while you remain in cover. If you're carrying two weapons when you pick up a support weapon, you'll not drop either of them. This allows you to add more diversity to your arsenal. Try to have a quick and fully loaded backup weapon, like the assault rifle or the shotgun in your hands, before picking up a support weapon, because that's the backup that you'll equip when you drop the support weapon. Here we can see that you move at about half speed when you're holding a support weapon. Turning or pivoting is also hampered with support weapons, making it harder to track an opponent that's moving quickly. Support weapons may slow down your movement and turning, but they do not hamper your jump height, so jumping remains a good defense against explosive or melee attacks while you've got a support weapon in your hands. The first support weapon we'll examine is the heavy machine gun. While connected to a stationary turret, the heavy machine gun has unlimited ammunition, but its range of fire is limited to 180 degrees in front of you. A Spartan is easily strong enough to rip a turret-mounted machine gun from its tripod base although doing so will detach it from its main ammo feed. A Spartan can use the remaining 200 rounds to devastating effect. Each round from the heavy machine gun does good damage, and it only takes roughly 9 rounds to the body of an opponent with full shields to eliminate them. Also note that the recoil from a heavy machine gun causes the barrel to climb, so you'll need to adjust down a bit if you pulled it from the tripod. However, the heavy machine gun is heavy, even for a Spartan, and it's slow to spin up to full firing range. If you're trying to conserve ammunition with an opponent you've pinned behind cover, it's best to repeatedly tap the trigger. That way you fire fewer rounds than if you were to hold the trigger down, but you never let the barrel stop spinning either. Finally, it bears mentioning that the heavy machine gun is never reloaded. That means that one heavy machine gunner can quickly eliminate multiple opponents without pausing to reload or switch weapons. In the right place at the right time, the heavy machine gun can really turn the tide of battle. It's useful to know where they're all located and to get to recognize the sound of one being fired from a distance. Next, let's look at the missile pod. Although technically designed for vehicle or stationary use, a Spartan can easily lift and use this rapid firing homing missile launcher. Compared to the rocket launcher, each missile does slightly less damage and has a smaller blast radius. But missiles travel faster through the air, have a higher rate of fire, and their payload never needs to be reloaded. Like rockets, missiles are best fired at the ground. In other words, you really need to unload on foes a little bit more when you're holding the missile pod than you do with a rocket launcher. Where the missile pod really shines is when you're facing opponents in vehicles. It takes two or three missiles to destroy a fully shielded banshee or hornet, two for a warthog, five for a scorpion, or four for a wraith. Missiles can lock on to vehicle targets. When you aim a missile pod at an enemy vehicle, the center of your target reticule turns red, and a red square appears over your target. While the reticule is red, you're locked on. Your missiles will track on the vehicle, and your opponent will hear an alarm to warn them. Note that your missiles won't lock on at extreme long range. Watch as the first missile's Bishop 56 fires don't home in on the target, but as the Banshee gets closer, subsequent missiles do, even though the reticule wasn't red when each of them was fired. Having a missile pod doesn't guarantee a kill on a vehicle, however. Skilled opponents in agile vehicles or ones near cover can still evade missiles, so try to catch them from above while they're out in the open or caught unawares, then fire a series of missiles to eliminate them. A good strategy to surprise opponents in vehicles with the missile pod is to not aim at them until the last moment. That way they don't have the alarm to warn them. Finally, let's take a look at the flamethrower. 
The M7057 is a standard chemical flamethrower, which projects and ignites a stream of volatile, semi-liquid fuel. It comes with 100 rounds, but will overheat after 9 rounds if you hold the trigger down the whole time. However, you can easily double the number of effective shots if you quickly tap or pulse the trigger. Each round fires a burst of flame a short distance that drops slightly as it travels. These flames will ignite anything they touch and continue to cause damage as they burn. If a flame round touches the ground, wall, or other objects as it travels, it continues to burn for a short time. One direct hit from the flamethrower will often not eliminate an opponent with full shields, even though they continue to burn. However, one round to the ground at their feet will often eliminate them, even if they continue to move away from the fire. To be sure, try to aim for the ground and hit each person twice. Players will take some damage as they move through flames on the ground or on walls and will be quickly killed if they stay in the fire. The flamethrower can effectively close off doorways or hallways if you pulse the trigger and lay out a large area of flames. For this reason, pursuing someone with a flamethrower is a bad idea. The speed at which you pivot, turn, or look up and down drops even further while you're holding the trigger of the flamethrower down. Your movement and jumping are not slowed down further, however. This means you should try to use the left thumbstick to catch rapidly traveling foes instead of the right thumbstick. Watch as Dean Gulberry easily outpaces me while I hold the trigger down and try to turn in place. Instead, if I sidestep and pulse the trigger, it's much easier to keep up with a fast-moving target. Flames can cause confusion because standing near fire causes the screen to fade and blur. It can be difficult to see if you're actually standing in the fire and taking damage or simply near it. Since it's difficult to see your shield meter near all that fire, listen for the sounds of taking damage or of your shields being depleted as you operate the flamethrower in close quarters. The flamethrower can be difficult to use, but with training, it can restrict your opponent's movement and quickly devastate entire groups of people. To learn more about this event, the Halo 3 Championship, or to register for the Play and Win, click on any of the banners that you see on Xbox Live that say Heavy Weapons Training. The Halo 3 Championship Tournament is sponsored by the U.S. Army. There's Strong, and then there's Army Strong. To learn more, visit GoArmy.com.